a spy novel author, finds herself embroiled in that world for real in the new movie Argyle. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film Argyle. This is in theaters right now, and it is uh, written and directed by Matthew Vaughn, the uh, brains behind the Kingsman franchise, of which uh, the first movie in that franchise is great. Uh, the second one is okay. Third one, um, you know, the, the less said about that, the better. Uh, so we'll see where Argyle lands sort of on that scale uh, in just a moment. First, though, let me welcome you into Dan Reviews It. Thank you for finding this video. We do uh, movie and TV reviews here on the channel. And just about every day I post something new. So uh, always a lot to check out. Please consider subscribing. Uh, click that notification bell. Click the like button. Comment below. Uh, and check out the links in the profile as well because uh, I have a Letterboxd now. Uh, Letterboxd is great for tracking uh, film viewing and film grades and lists and all of that stuff. Um, and so I, I have one that you can check out in the uh, links below. All right, so let's talk about Argyle, shall we? Um, so this features uh, Bryce Dallas Howard as this uh, author uh, named Ellen uh, Ellie Conway. And she is uh, the writer of this very, very successful Argyle uh, book series of which uh, Henry Cavill plays Argyle in uh, the, the movie because she sees, you know, kind of what's going on in the books in her head. And Henry Cavill and John Cena and Dua Lipa kind of all factor in uh, in in that realm of the movie. Um, and she finds herself embroiled in actual spy business uh, when she meets uh, the Aiden character played by Sam Rockwell, uh, who is uh, a part of that world. And he basically brings her into it. And uh, we find many, many things unfolding as uh, the movie continues. Tons of twists here. Um, and we have a lot of uh, names and faces that you will recognize. I don't necessarily want to spoil any of them, although um, at one point, one of the uh, the big, like, supposed reveals of the movie uh, is the, the Samuel L. Jackson character, you know, sort of turns around. And we already knew that he was, like, talking to one of the other characters because we see his, his big, beautiful, bald head uh, from the back sort of in the shadows. Um, but he was in all the trailers. He's on the poster it was not much of a reveal, I didn't think, you know, it was like, he, he did this big turnaround, the, the, the score is swelling, and uh, I don't know if we were supposed to cheer or gasp or something, but I'm like, yeah, we all knew he was in this movie, and he was a major part of the Kingsman movie, the first one, so like, he obviously, you know, has worked with Matthew Vaughn before, it wasn't very shocking, um, but that is this, this movie sort of in a nutshell, um, so it's got tonal problems, out the yin yang. Um, but, uh, let's talk first a little bit about, uh, Matthew Vaughn, because I really think the Kingsman was a fantastic movie and he is good at world building. And uh, he has attempted to do that here as well. And it, it's okay. Um, you know, the, the, the world that we've created for these characters and then the world within the world, um, through the Argyle books, um, you know, it, it's all fairly interesting and, and well thought out, but, the movie gets so bogged down with um, not knowing what exactly kind of movie it wants to be. It's certainly funny in places. Um, and the Kingsman, I don't know if it struggled necessarily with that, but as the franchise continued, like the second one I think went way more for comedy than it needed to and more than the first one did um, because I think the most memorable parts of that first one are the more sort of outrageous sequences. Um, and that is, I think, what Vaughn was trying to recapture here um, because there's some humor and there's some memorable action sequences, but it all just doesn't really come together. It doesn't add up um, the way that, that I think he wanted it to. And as a result, it is just a mess of a movie. Um, and there's also plot holes galore. Now, some of them do sort of get explained away with, with some of the twists and turns that come um, with the reveals, but others are still just like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Or, you know, if, if this Sam Rockwell character, if he's, you know, such a good spy, why is he doing that? Or why is he being lazy with this or, or whatever? It just, for, for plot convenience sake, but 
a character that's that decorated would never do something like that. So, like, it just, it, it didn't really make a lot of sense there. Um, and then there's the element of the horrendous CGI. If you've seen the trailers, which, look, I don't even watch trailers, and I've seen the trailer for this movie, like, ten times, because they are just bombarding us with it. Every single movie I go to, it's like the final trailer. Um, I keep seeing ads for it on Hulu. So, you know, you can, you can, this is not really a spoiler, but there's there's a, a cat in it, and if you've seen the trailer, you know that the cat is CGI all the way, and horribly so. Um, and I couldn't tell, like, okay, is this a choice? Like, are they choosing to make this cat look so ridiculously bad? It can't be, right? This has to be, like, real. But then, as we get towards the end and some of the memorable action sequences, there's, like really over-the-top bad CGI for um, some of the things happening. And again, not to go into spoiler territory, so I won't say exactly, like, what, but, you know, you, you can think about some of the things that you see regularly in action films um, and, and what might be CGI, um, and it just, it looked so terrible. Um, and at one point, I did think, okay, this, I think, they're attempting to be tongue in cheek about and sort of go like lean into the the bad CGI and the bad effects and stuff. I couldn't quite figure out if that's true, but it seemed like it was so over the top and so ridiculous and such bad CGI that I thought, okay, maybe they are going for that. But then were they going for that the whole movie with the cat? Uh, I, I just I can't figure it out. I can't put my finger on what they actually were trying to do with this movie, and that's not great. Um, you know, you, you can tell, I think, if a movie is purposely doing something that's that's meta or, you know, tongue-in-cheek or satirical or something. And this, other than, like, one big action sequence towards the end, I just thought, no, I think they're kind of, yeah, it's a little tongue-in-cheek, but, like, I think they're trying to put their all into these effects and stuff. It's just, it's not coming across. And to that end, um, you know, the Kingsman has a very, very memorable scene, two really memorable uh, scenes, actually, one in a church and one at the very end, the, the big standoff at the end. And I, if you haven't seen Kingsman, I won't give those away either. But I really think Vaughn was saying to himself, OK, how can I sort of recreate that, like, you know, memeable moment in Kingsman? Um, and I think he does an OK job with with one of the sequences. The other one, I, I don't really think uh, is very memorable, but. Um, yeah, this movie is just a, a whole mess. I will say that there are some comedic elements to it that work. Sam Rockwell, you know, is, is always great with the dry humor. Bryce Dallas Howard, um, is not one of my favorite actresses. I think she's fine. I'm sure she's a lovely person. But, um, you know, I, I think there's a reason that she's never really headlined a movie. And you could say, yes, you know, her and Chris Pratt were top billed in the Jurassic World movies, but people are coming to those movies for the dinosaurs, not for her. Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't think that would count. Um, and, and I will say there is, um, this is a joke spoiler, I guess, but there is one scene where um, they have her take her heels off before she starts running. That was sort of a cute little nod, I thought, to, to the Jurassic World uh, movie where she obviously ran in heels the whole time and everyone was like, what's she doing? That's impossible. Um, but yeah, so I, this movie is just a, a complete mess. The haircut on Henry Cavill is horrible. Um, they do sort of point that out, though. I think that was definitely on purpose, but boy, he's hard to look at with this uh, jackass-looking haircut. But uh, in any event, this is a bad movie, definitely most in line with the third Kingsman movie, uh, if we're going by that scale. I leave Argyle with a D+. Plus. All right, and you can check that out if you'd like to in theaters right now. Thanks for watching Dan Reviews, and we'll see you next time. Bye.